Hello to my wonderful art students. I am so grateful that I'm able to be with you today to do one last lesson before we start summer break. I cannot believe that I haven't seen your faces in over two months and I sure miss having our time together in the art room, but I'm very thankful that we're able to get together online and still do some art together. So before we begin, remember that this is a time for your creativity. This is your own expression and how you are expressing your creative voice. So no matter what, your art is always amazing and I give you an A+. If you do not have the supplies that I'm using in this lesson, use your imagination, get creative and work with what you have. I'm going to be using um, just black paper and chalk pastels. If you don't have something like that, then just use crayons or markers or colored pencils or paint, whatever you do have. And this month we are specifically going to focus on child prodigy artists. So a child prodigy is anyone under the age of 10 who has produced meaningful art to the level of an adult expert. They have mastered highly complex techniques at a very early age. They have also been recognized for achieving success and acclaim at a very early age. So this lesson is for fifth grade, but you can try any of the lessons that I have posted for kinder through fifth for this month or March and April as well. So we're going to move into the learning portion. Karen Williamson is a watercolor, oil, and pastel artist from Holt, Norfolk in England. He was born on August 4, 2002, so today he's 17 years old. He picked up a paintbrush at the age of five and he sold his first painting when he was only six. His second art exhibition was in 2009 at seven years old and his 16 paintings sold out in 14 minutes. He raised a total of 18,200 pounds, so the equivalent to that in dollars is about $22,000. In 2010, he had another exhibition where his paintings sold in 30 minutes at a total of 150,000 pounds, or roughly $182,000. By the age of 10, he made over $1,500,000 from his paintings, which is roughly the equivalent of $1,818,000. The media calls him Mini Monet. Just like Monet, Kieran Williamson enjoys what is called plain air painting. It's a French word meaning outdoors, and he loves going outside to paint what is right in his view. This is a screenshot from a YouTube video that I would love for you to go and watch. I will put the link in the bottom of the comments underneath this video so you can go watch it. It's just beautiful and it shows his life story as he celebrates 10 years of painting. So I highly recommend that you watch it. From Kieran's story on his website, he says, I was a typical energetic toddler. I loved playing in the mud investigating bugs, finding sticks, and generally exploring the outdoors. My parents have always been proud of me, and despite being quiet and reserved at school, I have always been studious, achieving good grades and great comments in all of my subjects. Living in a first floor flat with no outside space meant that my love and passion for the big outdoors was satisfied with bike ride trips to the North Norfolk coast the local country park, and lettering set forward. I needed space to run around and burn off energy. At play school, I simply loved the sand pit and not a lot else. My parents would draw dinosaurs for me and I was happy to color them in, but drawing was not really my thing. However, I first began drawing independently during our first family holiday to Cornwall, England in May of 2008. Inspired by the boats in the nearby bay at Gillian, I asked my parents for a sketch pad. The very next day, I was drawing pictures of boats, and as the holiday progressed, I began to add backgrounds and scenery, hills, and houses. As time progressed, so did my interest in learning artistic techniques. I had a lot of questions about the differences between oils and watercolors, how to put a picture together. My parents didn't have all the answers and they were not afraid to ask the locals for help. 
they say mom and dad. So mom and dad will admit that they are not artistic. They do, however, enjoy art and collect works by Norfolk artists. So when I started to ask for help with putting paintings together, my questions were answered by a host of local artists who were happy to spend time with me and talk me through lots of different aspects of painting. My mom says, from that day, I showed an instinctive ability to mix color. I love trying different media, watercolor, acrylics, and then oils and pastels. I have always insisted on using good quality adult art materials. I was never happy with poster paints. After our holiday in Cornwall, I used to spend an hour a week with Carol Pennington at the last picture show in town, Holt, during the summer of 2008. Carol's style is very contemporary and offered an opportunity for me to let go and loosen up a bit. I adamantly kept my style though. You can't get Karen to do anything he doesn't want to do, says mom. As my work progressed, mom and dad would regularly take it down to the picture gallery, Holt, to get their opinion. Praise, support, and encouragement is free, and we willingly share this with our children, whatever they are doing, stated Adrian Hill, Picture Crafts Managing Director. Both my parents hoped that one day in the future I might enter the art arena, but they never imagined it would happen at the age of six. With kind support from Picture Craft, another local artist, Brian Ryder, agreed for me to attend his evening watercolor course held between January and July of 2009. Despite being the only child at the classes, I was well accepted by Brian and charmed the other adults attending. A huge help in my development as an artist has been Tony Garner who has been great offering me the opportunity to attend pastel workshops and one-to-one -one tuition in the gallery. During the early summer of 2009, Carol was getting ready for Holt's first town festival and like me, she was surprised and frustrated by the lack of entries of local talented people. Carol could not offer me weekly art sessions that year, but instead offered me the opportunity to show my work in her gallery window, which is celebrated each week by different artists. I also advertised in Holt's local newsletter, The Holt Chronicle, offering pet portraits to help raise pocket money. I appreciated that good art materials do not come cheap, and my grandma Gil was incredibly generous during those early years and kept my art supplies flowing. In August of 2009, 19 of my paintings made their first public appearance and the rest, they say, is history. Overnight, I had become a global phenomenon. We never expected that people would want to buy my work, but people flocked to the gallery to see it and they telephoned and emailed the gallery too. My paintings have sold worldwide. There was interest from over 35 countries worldwide, and I started with over 1,800 followers on my mailing list, and that list is still growing. And I just kept on painting, painting for the love of it, painting the landscape around me, and spending time with people who also love to put it onto canvas. If you want to look at other art pieces by Kieran Williamson and continue making more art after our lesson, you can search for his official website on the internet. He also has an Instagram page and a book called My Chosen Path, Painting in the Landscape. Before we begin, I want you to notice some elements in Kieran's art. He has a beautiful balance of cool and warm colors in his landscape, mostly cool colors, which are the purples, blues, and greens, with a pop of warm colors, orange, yellow, and red in the center. He also uses the rule of thirds in his landscape, so we will also incorporate that into our landscape. You will notice within each third section, his colors have what is called harmony. The three to five colors on the color wheel that are next to one another are very close on the color wheel. That creates unity in your art. This is going to be our inspiration piece, so I want you to think of what supplies you might have at home to recreate this piece yourself. Gather them all together and we will get started. I'm going to use chalk pastels and black construction paper, but you can use anything you have. Please get creative with your imagination. 
And remember, the cool part about having class this way is that you can hit pause, you can go get a snack, you can come back to it later. It's just fine to take your time. It's not like we're rushed when we're in the classroom. Once you've completed your art, I want you to sign it with lots of flourish and be proud of yourself and show that your work is finished. I'd like you to take a picture of it and post it on Instagram or Facebook with the hashtag Rooted Oak Meadow and Saddle Up Mavs. And if you would please like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you can get updates during the summer if I post any additional fun classes for the kids to come together. We really want to keep our community going. We've missed seeing everybody and it's just like we're in the classroom when we give encouragement to ourselves and encouragement to our friends that we can continue to do that together through art and creating. So let's go make some art. So as we move into our lesson, I want to let you know, I am going to use chalk pastels, which you should be able to pick up at any um, craft store or at Walmart. You can order them online, just anywhere. You should be able to get chalk pastels. If this doesn't work for you, if you have paint or you have crayons, it's more important to me that you actually create and do something that you absolutely love than wait for you to have the perfect materials or have to some ugh. so before i get started with our lesson i really want to encourage you to use whatever you have on hand i am going to use a black piece of construction paper with oil pesto uh, with I am going to use a piece of black construction paper with chalk pastels, but please, if you only have crayons or colored pencils, if you have paint, whatever you have on hand, please use that just to create art and let your imagination run wild and start to get your artistic expression out onto a piece of paper. Please don't worry about if you have exactly what I have, and I also don't want you to worry about if you think yours looks like mine, it's the same as when we're in class. We want to just do the best that we can and think more about what's coming from inside of us out onto our paper than it looking precisely like what I'm doing. So I'm going to move over to the view of my desk so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so here is our inspiration piece by Karen Williams, and I am not keeping this. I will throw it away as soon as I'm done. This is just so that you can see it and I can see it. So remember, we're going to operate in the rule of thirds. So I'm gonna make a very just light line for you to be able to see what that would look like. So if I had a line here and here, and then here and here, you can see that this is where he has his sun, and then his trees come across this on his horizon line. So things are much more focal pointed. Even when you take a picture on your phone, you can set the grid on there and it has the rule of thirds in it so that you can set up a picture like that as well. So you always wanna have the focal points be in these four areas here and have like the sky, the sun and your horizon. It's a beautiful way to set up art. It just seems to be very intriguing to our human eye. I'm sure there's some kind of science behind it. So I'm gonna flip that over now and work on this side. So the first thing I want to do is set up working from the top down. I don't want to add um, a bunch down here and then keep running my hand through it because as you remember from class, chalk smears. So we don't want to mess up our clouds and I'm going to work on the sky part first. So I'm going to grab a lighter blue as I work in here and start to bring this, let me just scoot over a little bit. Start to fill in up here with my sky. I can smooth some of it in with my finger. It is not going in very well.
This is not going to work. Stay on at all. Hmm. So what do I want to do? Pause my recording. I'm getting the blue in the background. I like to use my finger to smooth it in. We'll get a good base coat in and then we'll go through and add more details and get the clouds in a little bit better. To get a good base layer coming in here, I still see a little bit of blue peeking through right there. So I'll we'll get this in the background. You can use your finger to smooth it out. Remember, just like you've learned in class, we don't want to mix colors. So if you have a warm finger and a cool finger, then that will help you not to end up mixing your colors in an ugly way. So then I'm going to come in with. A little bit of purple in here. I'm going to get these colors in. And some white up here. looking sky with fun clouds doing all different kinds of fun shapes and see if I can get some pink in here. Some peach kind of color. I do I want to make sure I keep one finger as a warm and one finger as a cool for blending so I don't end up making it turn a brown color just like when you mix paint Keep working up in your clouds until you have them the way you want them so that we won't be running our hand back up there again and messing them up. 
You can always do your last final swooshy details. I'm sure that's a really technical art term, swooshy. <laughs> do some swooshy details up here. Okay, so I like what's happened with my sky at this top section. So I'm going to move into the next part that has the warmer colors starting to come in. So that's going to be a lot more of my light yellows and whites and pinks. So I'm going to get these colors ready to go. I have some orange in there. Maybe a little bit of a lighter orangey red. So I think I'll stick with those colors. I want it to be soft and I want my sun definitely to stay as white as I can keep it in the center so that we can make it look like it's burning. So I'm going to go ahead and put my sun in here, give it a pretty big band so then I can come in and bring some colors in on it while the, the center still stays very white. I'm going to do my white with my other hand so I get no other color in it but white. So get a good base layer of that and maybe make it a little more solid here. Come around. Then I'll move into my yellow. You want it to look like it's on fire. So you're gonna go from white into a yellow, and blend that in. And this yellow base is actually going to extend all the way across here and start to come up in here in the top of the sky. One of the things that I have found when I'm working with chalk pastels is to keep a baby wipe handy. They're really great for cleaning off your fingers quickly. I don't actually have one in here with me, but I wish I did. <laughs> baby wipes are great. So I'm getting this yellow all the way around here. I'm carrying it out where I can see it just a little bit. There's actually some wider clouds up here sailing through, and those wider clouds seem to have some yellow reflecting into them on top of that. And put a little bit of that up there. You can also use a Q-tip for blending if you don't want to have it end up mixing in with your fingers. You don't, some people don't like the way that feels very well. And I've got some pink right in here. I hope that you have been very inspired by this child prodigy artist. He is a great artist and a very inspirational kiddo. So 
I'm going to use this. I thought I had a peachy color out. Try lighter yellow here just to do a little bit of soft blending of the white into the yellow. But we want to leave our white and our sun very white right there. And then we can start to blend in and get a good base into the grain of the paper. So it makes it look more muted, but then we can come back through and add more bright colors on top of it and it'll have a very good base underneath it. Then I want to start bringing in some orange and then some pink. So this is like the stages of the sun's rays as they go out and it gives it a, a nice hue. Then we can blend each little layer together. Just keep trying to save that white finger so if I need it, I have it. making sure not to run this color into my white. I need to come and bring a lot of white in here. And then I can have that as my base all the way down here to the bottom of my landscape.
And all of these cools, they work great in layers. I'm going to pat more than rub now just to get some good cloud pattern in. And I'm going to try and stay very close to my cools and not run through a worm that's going to end up making it look muddy. We want to have this nice sky, flowy sky effect. Using my other finger that I have my warms on so that I'm not mixing my warms and my cools. Okay, so I'm going to stay focused in this area now and bring in some of that orange more out here. And it's coming out further. I have that nice base layer. Good to keep on layering. Trying to look at my fingers and which ones I have warms and cools on. Another great tool to use is just a Q-tip. If you want to come in here and smooth it really gently with a Q-tip to blend those together. I think I'll add a little more white onto it so that it's nice and soft. I think I like my fingers better. So I'll come in here with my fingers and keep a warm hand and a cool hand as I come and blend this in, keeping that circle around my sun and being very careful not to go into my cool area. So it blends nice.
So then you can always come back in and add more layers as you get filled in. We do have, we just had Mother's Day. We do have Father's Day coming up too. And this is a nice handsome kind of piece of art that would be a good dad gift. blend all of this in down here just to make sure that I don't have any paper that doesn't have chalk filled in the cracks already. And I'm going to take my cool hand and come up here and start to blend some more of this in so it's smoother, sticking in the cool areas. I don't want to have the yellows mix in and then it's messy. I'll keep using my finger with the worms on it for this. Cool. All right, I'm really loving the way that's looking up there. So I think I need to bring in some more of this pinky peach red color as we get further out and away from the sun. through and add all of this in. Probably go over my yellows in here a little bit again just to give it another bold layer. So as I blend them together it keeps getting brighter and brighter. You take it from white to yellow to a peach to a pink and mix that in. You can intersperse some of this pink out here. Throw in a little bit more yellow coming up here again. and use my white to get some blending coming in here. Soften it up a little bit. And just straight color. Okay, then I'm going to start with my warm finger again. I'm going to come around and start to blend that in really well so that I don't have streaky lines anywhere.
beautiful. I really am starting to like it a lot. So you can keep on layering and adding in the chalk pastels. And I want this part over here to be a little bit more white. that like clouds are burning off look to it okay so I'm going to leave all of that alone at the top now except I may add in a little bit more white again just to get my last little sections of clouds to stand out I'm not going to blend them in. I'll leave them right there on the surface. So now I'm going to move into my base layer down here. I want to just have white as my base so I can work from there. I always like to have something underneath the bottom. It starts to fill in so I don't have to blow off so much chalk. This is all going to be cool down here, so I can use my right hand for my cool colors. So we'll have cool up here that merges into warm here and back into cool at the bottom. And we'll get our base layer sealed in. And then start to bring in some of these colors. We've got some great browns and greens. Pretty much think I'm through with purple and blue. But I have a bunch of natural colors, browns and greens. So I'll work with these first. I can see this yellow in here. I'm starting this in my background of my grass. Remember, you can hit pause anytime as we're going through. There's a little bit of brown in here and along this part of the grass. And I want to be able to mix those in. There's a darker green with some darker brown down here. So we'll just get these base layers in. And then I definitely want to take this darker chocolate color and just straight across do my horizon line. Start to get some of my trees in here. I'm not going to want to mess with this too much as far as blending. I want the trees to be very loose have some leafy pattern that's just coming in on top of the chalk that we've already done. Right under the sun is this. So use the corner to use, get this leafy technique, just patting and dotting on top of that peachy color. This tree is a little bit thicker. This one's really light right here, so I'm just dotting. It's really shaking my camera on my table, I'm sorry.
And a lot of these are going to have green in them, but I'll put a little bit of a base of a brown so you can see where the trees are. And in perspective, they're smaller back here. Y'all have learned about perspective. So they're smaller the further away we get. But this guy is pretty big, so I'm, I want him to really take up a lot of this space here. Get a base layer in, and then I can put some green on top of it. And keep that grass area free to be able to put in. It's really a beautiful project. I hope you will take your time work it out. I'll get some more brown into this space here. And maybe a little bit up here. So I'm going to go ahead and blend. Not these trees, but this part here I'll start to blend in and this and all of the ground. But these I want to leave alone so they have that detail. Now we can go in and fill in with some darker colors and deeper colors. So I'm going to use this green to see anywhere that I see some green happening. And I love the way these trees here have a little bit of a blue color to them. I have a darker blue that I think I can use for that in these in-between trees. And I'm just using the corner very lightly. Just to get that pattern in that looks sort of tree shaped. I'm going to do my next ones here. And there's this building that is like this. And I'll just have that there and then I can add more details to it with some other colors in a minute. Just try to get these blue-gray trees in here. Go over those with some little bit of white just to lighten them up. I'm going to switch to this other end just so I don't accidentally get any kind of cool mix and warm colors mixing in with my cool.
And then here I'll come in with this darker brown again and darken it up a little more before I add in some really deep green. When you bring black in, do it very sparingly because as you've learned in class before, once you get it in, it goes everywhere. And you don't wanna have it mix in with your beautiful colors and make everything really dark. So I'm very careful with it. So only put it right where I know I want it to be. which in this case is the shadow into my horizon line. Okay, guys. So we want to add in a little bit of darker green down here and some darker brown just to get the shading and the shadows going. There's these beautiful wisps of grass that are coming up in the details here. And it gives it that perspective that you're right here close up. And then I want to have my hay bales. So I have some, just like when we've done chalk work in, in class before, there's some in the distance that are smaller and then some medium ones and then very large ones. So I will do my circles here and they'll be a little blurrier off in the distance. As we get closer, it gets a little bit bigger, and then right up front, these are going to be much larger. So, and if they get a little blurry, you're off in the distance. You won't be able to tell as much detail about them. Not sure if they're hay bales or cotton bales, but we'll do them a little blurry off in the distance. And then as we get closer, they'll get a little bit more definition to them. I'll put a few little accents with the darker brown in here. Add in just a little bit more white back here in the very background. And I feel pretty good about this. I think I should darken this up over here a little bit more because this is very shadowy on this side. Probably 
add in some black to try and darken it up for shadows. Okay, and I feel very good about it. So in order to finish off our art, we always want to sign it. And I am going to use this black and I'm just going to do my initials because it's hard to write your name with chalk. So I want for you to go ahead and sign your art. And then if you would take a picture of it and post it on Instagram or Facebook, and if you would use the hashtag Saddle Up Mavs or Rooted Oak Meadows so that we can all see your work, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. So during the summer, if we have any art that I post, then you can go ahead and add that to your summer activities and have a great time. So I will miss you guys. I hope you have a wonderful time in junior high and I hope you will stay in touch with your teachers from Oak Meadow and not forget all of us because we have sure had a great year with you. And we hope you have a fantastic graduation and a great move on to your next phase in your life. I'm gonna miss you so much. So keep in touch. Have a great summer. Bye-bye.